Hey everybody, welcome back to Cherokee Hacks Life. Wanted to go into intermittent fasting and I had a great conversation with one of my friends this weekend. Uh, we were playing poker and stuff and he's tried a bunch of different diets already along the way um, and kudos to him, good job bro, on actually losing a ton of weight from where he was before. Um, he's hovering in the 200 uh, light, 200 like 205 range I think it was. Um, and he was definitely a much bigger guy before and he actually took it upon himself to just change his life. So definitely kudos to him and kudos to you if you're doing the same thing. But he's kind of realized that he's kind of hit a plateau and some of you guys might actually be feeling the same way. And you feel like, damn, I've tried all these different diets, all these different lifestyle changes, but I still feel like I plateaued. So I said, look dude, try IF, try intermittent fasting. Um, and he's all for it. He's one of those guys that he's like, yeah, sure, man, I'll give it a shot. Why not? Let's see what works. Um, and I said, look, try it for like six to eight weeks. See if it works for you. And I was trying to break it down for him to make it as simple as possible for him to try to be able to do IF and be successful at it. And what I've learned along the way are different tips that I've put up videos on, but I've never really posted up five simple or three simple steps that you could do in order to be successful. So the first one is figure out how many calories you need per day. What I mean by that is, Download an app like MyFitnessPal, go to an online calculator, and figure out how many calories you need in order to ma maintain whatever your goal weight is, or maintain or actually get to your goal weight. So let's say, just for the sake of argument, you're 200 pounds, and you want to ultimately get down to 175 within the next, I don't know, three to six months. Put it in there how many, what your ultimate goal weight is and how many pounds you want to lose per week in order to get to your goal, and be truthful to yourself on how you're setting up MyFitnessPal because it will tell you if, it'll ask you if you're a heavy person, or excuse me, it'll ask you if you're an active person. That doesn't mean if you're active in the gym. It means what your daily activity breaks down to be. If you sit, at, sit on your ass all day like I do, at a desk, making calls or whatever, you need to make sure that you put light activity, because honestly, you're not picking up boxes and you're not moving around. If you're a mail carrier, set it up to be a mail carrier, a little bit, obviously a little bit lighter than just light activity moderate activity I think it's called. So set it up properly so it gives you the right calorie amount. Ultimately though, you want to make sure you monitor that. Okay, We'll go that into that a little bit as well. Step two that I figured out was plan your meals ahead of time. And what I mean by that is either cook your meals ahead of time, plan out um, more or less if you're going to have a work function, if you're going to have dinner the next day, make sure you plan ahead of time what you're going to be eating so that way you can input it into your calculator so that way you know what you're eating before you get to that point where your window is up, right? Step, in, within that same step you have to plan out if you're eating out, calculate about a 20% variance in the food that you eat out for. So in case you guys didn't know, the FDA gives you a 20% range if you're a restaurant or you're a food manufacturer or whatever, food, food, uh, food confectioner, what you actually wound up doing is you have a 20% range in between the nutritional information that you're actually putting on there. So if something says it's 300 calories, let's say, there's a 20% range in there that they have to play with. I think some of these food companies try to be as accurate as they can, but obviously they have a 20% uh, uh, variance between what they're actually putting up. So something that's 300 calories can easily be 240 calories, or it could be 360 calories. It's a pretty damn big fucking range. So know your body, Right, and with knowing your body, you'll know whether or not you're actually gaining, putting in too many calories, or putting in too little, and you just feel fatigued the next day. IF will probably give you a little bit of fatigue after the first couple of weeks, or during the first couple of weeks. With that said, the third step is so that way you know where you're at, and you know how comfortable you are, and you know your body a lot better. Measure yourself before starting out on IF, and what I mean is. Measure yourself with some calipers, Get pick up some calipers from Vitamin Shop, they're 23 bucks right now, they're on sale. Um, or go to your gym, measure yourself, um, get full measurements, waist, arms, legs, everything, chest. So that way you know where you're starting out at, and that way you know if IF is going to be the right thing for you, because ultimately it has to work for you. That's the third step. The fourth step is... You need to make sure you plan out a cheat day, because if you're like me, I mean, I have some pretty damn good willpower, but every now and then I need my cheat day, and I honestly didn't feel like this, like I needed it before, um, and I always used to tell people, ah, you know, don't have a cheat day, blah, 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 but you do kind of need a cheat day. If you're that person that doesn't need a cheat day, more power to you, but I found like I did, um, especially on IF. So 
make sure you plan your cheat day and try to be flexible around when your cheat day is going to be just because life is just going to come up. Life is going to come up with a dinner plan with uh, your sweetie or your sweetheart or whatever, your girlfriend, wife, husband, boyfriend, whatever. Something's going to come up that's actually going to change up your lifestyle a little bit. So make sure you're flexible in that regard, but make sure you plan a cheat day and that could probably be your cheat day if you're going to have a late dinner or something like that. The fifth step is goes hand in hand with everything else you need to set a good eating window for yourself so if you're gonna do start off you can start off with the most basic form of an IF window that I've noticed is a 16 hour fast with an 8 hour eating window you're almost damn near a normal person at that point you could eat four meals every two hours and you'll be and as long as you hit your calories you should be golden make sure that you give yourself a comfortable eating window what I mean by that is if you're the type of person that wakes up in the morning and say you have a nine to five job. Make that your eating window. It's an eight hour day. You're, you stop eating at five, you continue the entire night without eating, and then go into the next day at nine o'clock in the morning, you start eating again. That's a 16 hour window you fasted, eight hour window when you started eating. As you go along, week after week, try to shrink your window a little bit more each day. So try to get it down to, or not every, each day, excuse me, each week. So let's say after the first week, you're like, okay, cool, I did eight hours. Or maybe after the second week, try to shrink it down to maybe seven. Then you'll have a 17 seven hour window. Shrink it down even further. Slowly get down to the point where you have a window that's comfortable for you. But more importantly, where you're getting the, the amount of calories that you need. And just remember to be flexible on when you have to move those hours around because life comes up. You have to be flexible sometimes with IF. It's not one of those things that's super rigid. Um, in terms of flexibility, I mean just flexibility in terms of your time. Um, so keep that in mind. I think those are the real three, five basic steps, excuse me. Five basic steps again are, figure out your calories for the day. My Fitness Pal is a great way to do it. Two, plan your meals ahead of time. Make sure you plan for a 20% variance as well with some of the food that you're actually picking up unless you're actually cooking your food. Then you know that more or less what you cook and you weigh is going to be within the calorie range that you want, but still plan about a 20% variance on the calories that you already or that you already are taking in if you're buying food out. Um, third, measure yourself, and when I say measure yourself, I mean full body measure yourself, body fat, everything. Give yourself a good, accurate number to work with as a good starting point, um, and make sure you try to hit your macros within that starting point or within your caloric window. Um, plan your cheat day. So again. Plan your cheat day and try to be flexible around that. That's probably, again, one of the most important things. And give yourself a good eating window. That's the fifth one. So a good, pot, a good, um, a good eating window. For me, for example, I'm now officially down to a four-hour eating window. I'm doing a 20-hour fast. I'm at a four-hour eating window. I'm probably going to bump it up to five because next week I'm going into a bulk phase. Or actually this week I'm actually going to start going into a bulk phase um, because I want to start putting on a little bit more mass more lean muscle is that ultimate goal but again that's just my advice so hopefully you guys like it if you do subscribe uh, if you have any questions feel free to leave them down below in the comment box but as, as always whatever your goal is whatever you're moving forward to make it happen no bullshit no excuses make it happen